Next chief economist Jan Hatzius is here with us at Post 9. He had definitely taken the over at 300. I think only City was above you at 305. How can this number be, given uh, the wage data that it accompanies it? Well, it certainly was a very strong report all around, not just the, the jobs number, but also the average hours number, the household survey, you know, drop in the unemployment rate, big increase in uh, household employment and the employment to population ratio. So I think it was a genuinely strong report. That said, you always have to take these outlier numbers with a grain of salt. And I would say that's especially true in January because January is a very difficult month to seasonally adjust. The not seasonally adjusted change in payrolls in January is always deeply negative. So, uh, you know, that, that illustrates not seasonally adjusted employment was down sharply as it is every single January. And that illustrates that you have to take it with a grain of salt. Having said that, if I look at these employment numbers and I look at the jobless claims numbers and I look at also the non-manufacturing ISM survey, you know, clearly the economy is doing a lot better than many forecasters, and indeed the consensus of forecasters is saying, because consensus continues to be that we're going into a recession. Right. We, and there's, there's just no sign of that. Right. Meantime, you have a great note today on China and the impact it will have on global growth and inflation. Does it, do you um, forecast a, a period in which we look at a resurgence of inflation and a double scare that would obviously affect uh, Fed commentary? No, we, do, we, we still think that the trend in inflation is likely to be, to be down and down quite a bit. Uh, you know, we're currently, depending on which indicator you look at, somewhere between four and a half and six and a half percent on inflation. And we think those numbers are coming down to the 3% range by the end of the year. That said, you look at the China reopening, you know, at least as far as energy prices and headline inflation are concerned, it's probably one reason why that decline might be a little bit smaller than it otherwise would be. So the thing I keep coming back to is we had the jolts number yesterday. We had this hotter than expected um, stronger than expected jobs report this morning. You have President Biden talking about, you know, nearshoring and reshoring uh, and the fact that more shovelers are going to go into the ground and they're essentially, and we've been having this conversation as well, there's still more money at the state and local level that is yet to be deployed from all the fiscal stimulus we've seen over the last couple of years. Immigration still limited, at least legally, and then boomers retiring some structural changes to the labor market. Does that mean that there is real risk here that the Fed's going to have to tighten even more for even longer than is baked into the markets right now, uh, given the fact that it is a very different labor environment than it was a couple years ago? We do expect the Fed to do more than what markets are pricing. We think we'll get another couple of hikes that takes you to the low fives rather than the high fours, which is current market pricing. And then more importantly, we don't expect cuts in the funds rate until well into 2024 in our mm -hmm. baseline forecast. You know, as you know, the market is priced for some pretty significant cuts in later this year and into 2024. And it's because of some of the factors that, that you mentioned. But, you know, I think the broad point is the economy is, you know, still quite strong. The labor market certainly is still very strong. And while inflation is coming down, even if we get to 3% by the end of this year and maybe to 25 in 2024, that's still, you know, above the target. So unless there's a sort of very, you know, much steeper decline in inflation than what we have in our forecast, you probably are still pretty comfortable with that if you're the FOMC.